The real estate market in Nova Scotia for October 2023 is bucking the trend for the rest of Canada. In this report, I'm going to cut right to the chase when it comes to comparing stats this month, but stick around to the end where I'll give you my thoughts on how global pressures could affect our market here in Nova Scotia. And of course, I'll include my recap of homes sold prices across the province. If by the end you do find value in my videos, please help my channel by liking, subscribing, and turning on that notification bell so that you let the YouTube gods know that they should be sharing my content. And of course, you get to stay in the know for all things to do with Nova Scotia real estate. So let's look back on the month of October to see what the real estate market was doing here in Nova Scotia. I will analyze the list to sale ratio, days on market, and of course, what homes were selling for. I will look at the median numbers for residential sales, which includes single family and condos, and ones that are firm deals, but not necessarily closed, except for on the South Shore region, because they don't post what the sale prices are until the property has actually closed. For list to sale ratio, I'm looking at the original list price as opposed to the current list price at the time of receiving an offer. This is because in this market, it has been difficult to set the list prices, especially in smaller markets. So we have seen list prices starting out high um, with sellers hoping to capitalize on the uh, COVID prices, but then having to lower their list prices after not getting the interest from buyers. The list to sale ratio is what percentage the sale price is to the original list price of the property. The median percent of list to sale ratio for Nova Scotia is 97.4% for October. This is up from last month and last year. The Halifax Dartmouth median list to sale ratio is still at 100%, which was the same for the last two months and up from this time last year. And the Valley is at 96.5% and the South Shore list to sale ratio is around 91.6%. Annapolis Valley is down slightly from last month and the South Shore is down 4%. So hopefully we're seeing a little more flexibility on the seller's part as to what they're willing to accept, especially if their home has been listed for more than 45 days. This also tells me that there is less competition in these rural areas because when there are multiple offers, often you'll see uh, offer rural prices go over the list price, which would then result in a 100% list to sale ratio. Now for days on market. For October, we are seeing a de decrease for all of Nova Scotia, meaning it's taking a bit less time to sell, which is somewhat normal for the fall market as buyers want to get into their new homes before the snow flies. Halifax Dartmouth remained the same at nine days compared to September. Now this is a median tally, uh, but we see a much different number when we look at the average number of days on market, which sits at 30 days. So this shows that there is a greater number of properties sitting on the market longer, which then affects the average calculation. In the Annapolis Valley, homes are selling in 22 days when priced properly, which is four days faster than in September. The average days those was 38 days, which is significantly less than the 54 days it took in September. This shows me that sellers and agents are beginning, beginning to be a bit more proactive in setting list prices in this area, as the reality sets in that COVID pricing is now a thing of the past. Little reminder to smash that like button. Now for what homes are selling for across Nova Scotia. For Nova Scotia as a whole, the median home prices were up from last month to 401,500. That's an increase of 4%. And compared to last year, that figure is up 13.8%. Now the average price is typically higher than the median price, but it's wise to look at both calculations, especially at the percentage of increase from the previous months, as it gives an indication as to if there were any extremely high or low sales that might be impacting the final numbers. Halifax Dartmouth is the region of Nova Scotia that is defined by our real estate board and it spans from Queensland up past Sheet Harbour. The median home sale price was 500,000, which is up 2% from 490, 250 last month, but keep in mind that the closer you get to the city centre, the higher the home prices. Such as on the Halifax Peninsula, the median home sale price was 639000 although this is down 22% uh, from last year. 
Be sure to check out movenovascotia.com for local community info and check out my Real Deal Roadmap for Buyers and Sellers. Now, the Annapolis Valley region is defined by our board to be the West Nova Scotia that runs along the Bay of Funday. The median home sale price for the Annapolis Valley in October was $347,500, which is up 4% from September and up 24.5% from last year. The average home sales here for October was $357,607. Uh, that's down slightly just $1,230 from September but up 18.2% from this time last year. For the South Shore region, uh, median home sale prices were, was at uh, 320,000, which was an increase of, from 2002 of 3.2%. This is down though, 2.3 from September. The average home selling price for the South Shore region was 402,422. Now this is down 10% from last month, but up 3.5 from last year. Now this is significant because there was a huge uh, million dollar home sale in September for the South Shore. That, so that really impacts the average home price and the 80,000 difference uh, we see from the median to average price. Now let's chat about mortgage rates. While the Bank of Canada decided recently not to raise the bank rate, which is now sitting at 5.25%, as part of its efforts to de decrease inflation rate, the inflation rate has shown modest declines down to 3.8%. Now, Governor Macklin says the central bank maintained this policy rate because it felt we were still seeing the effects of previous rate hikes and uh, they're still filtering through the economy. So they took a pause to see what the outcomes of those previous rate hikes would have. The policymakers and predictors are setting expectations that the interest rates will remain higher for longer in order to achieve a target of 2% inflation rate by 2025. Unfortunately, due to the US government recently increasing their debt ceiling, this has increased bond yields, which in turn increase the, which, uh, the borrowing power for the average consumer and have caused fixed mortgage rates to increase. So now we have fixed rates sitting pretty close to the variable rates. So expect new borrowers to go with a variable rate mortgage for shorter periods. So the five-year fixed insured mortgage rate, insured being less than 20% down payment, is sitting at 5.49 and the variable rate insured is currently at 5.99. Keep in mind the stress test uh, that makes borrowers have to be able to afford a mortgage at a 2% higher rate. The stress test was put in place after the last crash where we saw tons of bank repos uh, to add a buffer uh, of ability for the borrower to continue to pay their mortgage should rates go up or their income go down. With these rates expected to be higher longer, this greatly reduces the affordability of homes at the current prices. This is seen with a decrease in overall home sales across Nova Scotia for the past two months. The rural areas have seen the greatest decrease because these areas typically have lower priced homes or the ones priced perfectly for first time home buyers. The South Shore sales were down 30% from this time last year. The Halifax Dartmouth region actually have seen increases from last month and 2.6 from this time last year. And this is most probably because the current interest rates aren't a big deterrent for buyers who are able to buy homes in this price range of $500,000 and up. So these mortgage rate increases are having the most effect on first time home buyers and lower income bracket Canadians who are already ironically affected the most by this inflation rate. Next up are the home sold prices from across the province. But if you want my full market breakdown, click on my blog report below. Thanks for watching The Real Deal with Dawn.